Okay, let's get on the cheese. I've just uncovered it. There you can see on my curds, they're beginning to cool down. Um, and they've taken on a completely different texture now. Uh, and I also think I've got slightly too much here for one of my moulds. So what I'm actually going to do is split the batch now. So anyone just making a cheddar could continue with the process. But I'm going to take that one and that one. And we're going to cook these later on into a mozzarella. So I'm just going to wrap, wrap them in this foil, uh, cling film even, if it's big enough. And I'm just going to leave that to one side. That can go there. Right, now the next step with this lot is we've got to break it up and salt it. So I'm just going to be pulling, in fact I may get a knife a bit quicker and we're just going to pull it apart into about thumbnail size pieces and this is the part now where you'd have your cheese curds of course these will be slightly more acidic than what you'd probably be used to I've just taken the pH and it's a little on the low side which is why I'm sort of rushing this process through, it's 5.1 that's also why I think that uh, those two pieces of curd I've just taken will take well to mozzarella because of the acid in there Just about got to the end now. There's a few more bits of curd to cut up, and then we're going to salt it. And what I've actually done is weighed out 38 grams of salt. Now I've weighed the curd and uh, calculated how much salt I'm going to need to put 1.6% salt in there. Now that's slightly low and that's because I think the weight of the curd is going to come down a little bit and the final weight of the cheese will be somewhat less than what I've weighed out at. At the minute we've got 2,371 grams of curd here. But I expect the final cheese to be somewhat less than uh, 2 kilograms. So yeah, I'm happy with that. So there's the salt, this is just sea salt. Just get that in. Then you have to mix it through. Can't help but thinking it looks like diced chicken at this stage. Now the purpose of the salt is A for flavouring but also to arrest that bacterial formation and begin to prevent it from over acidifying because we're quite low on the acid content as it is so we'll be looking to, uh, to keep that down as, as much as possible now and we want to stop it forming anymore. Breaking up these 
big kids. Make sure the salt's evenly distributed throughout. Right, now I'm going to set up my mould. Okay, so here we have quite a deep mould lined with a cheesecloth. And what I want to start to do is take the salted curds and we're going to just sprinkle them in the best we can. Now this moulds a little on the deep side so I may have a bit of trouble with getting the uh, getting the cheesecloth to sit right initially but you know that's fine something we can work on my hands and quickly wash them because you get quite a bit of fat on your hands off the cheese. Okay, now I've got a wooden follower here that fits nicely into the top of there. What I'm going to do though, I've just sanitised it, but to prevent any of the cheese leaching into the into the follower, I'm just going to encase it in plastic, and then we can send that on down. There we go. So he sat nicely on top of the curds. And now I'm going to have to go and set up the press and we're going to begin to press this with uh, about 5 kilograms of weight at first. Okay, so here we are at the pressing area. What we're going to try and do now is um, get press in there Uh, now ideally, you'd want to be doing this where it's warm, but unfortunately that's where the press is. So we're going to be leaving that for 10 minutes, then we're going to come back and flip the cheese. Right, we're 10 minutes in, so I've brought the cheese in, and what we're going to do now is just drain away this little bit of buttermilk that's come out way there. Just give that a quick rinse. And then we're going to take out the cheese. Just let that 
drop through the bottom and we're going to redress it. So that basically means take off your follower and as you can see now we've got the beginnings of the cheek starting to form there and what we want to do is turn it. If I just move that across there it holds together quite nicely so I'm just going to straighten out the cheese cloth there on the base and then back down it goes and then we can pull up the cheese cloth neatly around the cheese This will help to prevent any deep creases forming in the final cheese when it's pressed. There we go. All right. Then I'm just going to slide it back in. In she goes. And you heard her hit the bottom there. And then we're just going to open that cheesecloth up to get the follower in. Just going to give that a quick rinse as well. Right now, on the top, what I want is just one layer of cheesecloth to help wick the moisture away. So if I just push it to one side like that, there we are. And that needs to be neither in nor out. No difference really. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this back on the press and this time I'm gonna be hanging a five kilogram weight on the end of the, on the, end of the press. Well, last minute thing, I've just took it out of the mould, it's been in there 24 hours, it's had quite some weight on it now. Um, I've taken the cheesecloth off, come and have a look Jim. Show them what, what I've done. So basically all I'm doing is just rubbing the cheese down with a knife. There don't seem to be any gaps, but just where there's any cracks or fissures, I'm just going to rub them over. And that's just to provide a barrier because this rind on the outside is going to eventually toughen up and dry out and I've not decided yet whether I'm going to wax this or not or uh, or salt it or brine it I just don't know yet we'll see if I can get a pan big enough I'll wax it but yeah that's going to be left now for four or five days, turning once or twice a day. You can see it's a bit lopsided from the press. Get out, boy. But yeah, we're just gonna leave it somewhere to dry out as slowly as possible. So really you need somewhere that's temperature controlled and humidity controlled. So I'm actually gonna pop this in the fridge um, and I might actually leave the bandage on it as well just to help wick away the moisture. Uh, and yeah, might be able to check back when I wax it, we'll see. We shall see.